World Autism Awareness Day. And understanding how people navigate their lives living on the autism spectrum is in focus. And to further that conversation tonight, we're joined by the CBC's Justin McElroy. He wrote on the importance of knowing more about a condition that can be invisible to many and is often still stigmatized. The article, of course, on our website. And Justin, what, what should people know about those living on the autism spectrum? Well, I think the first thing to know, Mike, is what you said to end the sentence, that it's a spectrum. Uh, approximately one in 66 Canadians are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. And uh, the, what spectrum means is that they can have all sorts of different symptoms associated with autism, and those symptoms can be mild or severe in all manner of ways. So what I like to tell people to, about myself is that I'm one dot on this large spectrum, and if people know a little bit more about me, they know a little bit about the story of uh, autistic people, but it's just my experience and perspective. All right, and they're going to find out uh, more about you uh, in the article, of course, but uh, what, what motivated you to, to write about it? Uh, a couple things. I think any time someone is in a position to raise awareness and to tell a story and is privileged enough to have that platform to do so, uh, to talk about a condition that is still often stigmatized and still invisible in a lot of different ways, it does a lot of good, hopefully. Uh, tomorrow is World Autism Day. Uh, and the second thing is, you know, as a journalist, I try and be an open book. And I often tell people, if people know a little bit more about the reporter that they're listening to, the more likely they are to trust them. So this is one small way of doing at that, and it's one small way of sharing a little bit about myself and giving people an uh, example of what autism can look like in some situations. And, and as you point out, uh, it is a, a spectrum, but uh, so there's going to be differences. Uh, but, uh, but what do people still get wrong uh, when we talk about autism? Uh, I mean, a lot, uh, and I, t you know, it depends on the person. But there is a lot that ends up being generalized. You know, I, I'm someone that people might consider on the high functioning uh, autism, and people will, you know, make jokes about, say, Rain Man or the Big Bang Theory or things. That, that are superficial like that. Uh, and at the same time, just the supports that exist in uh, education systems and in government, you know, they have uh, improved, but because of the nature of uh, autism, it's still such a patchwork for parents, especially going from place to place to try and find the specific supports needed for their children. And uh, it's hard to explain just all of them at one time to people. Yeah, and, and tell us what you heard from the, the people you spoke with for the article. Yeah, so doing this uh, a story that appeared on our website, I talked to a couple of people. One of them is Paul Finch, uh, the BCGEU treasurer, and he talked about, you know, things that for people who are autistic will seem pretty common, things like, you know, when you're t talking to someone and they make a facial expression, you don't really understand at first, you have a database in your head where you go over all the different times that someone has made that facial expression and then you try and sync it up to interpret how they were feeling about it. You know, he talked about how he works with uh, children and talks to kids who are on the spectrum and with their parents to, you know, give kids encouragement but also give uh, adults some tips and to tell the parents just to always encourage their ch kids and uh, to make space for them to figure out exactly what their strengths and weaknesses are. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate you uh, sharing your journey with us tonight, Justin. Thanks very much. Thanks, Mike.